Welcome to LS Industries flow through washer 24 by 24 stainless steel wash walk through. This is the exit end of the system. You'll notice that there is a door on the uh, rinse section, an access door on the wash section. The device that you see on top of the system is the ex excess blower uh, to uh, ex extinguish the uh, steam from the cabinet. The uh, other device that you see on top is the uh, oscillating mechanism for the, uh, for the wash manifolds. The uh, control panel, as you can see, we have it temporarily wired. When the uh, system arrives at your facility, you will uh, basically, your electrician will select the location to put the uh, access point into the cabinet. Uh, the wiring will be up at the top where you see the three wires currently wired in at. And that's, that's these wires right here. You'll notice that there's a disconnect switch right here that will be active once the, uh, the, the, the wiring is out of place and we can shut the door entirely. Uh, the unit will ground down below. On the inside of the electrical cabinet you'll notice two timers. Um, there are labels on both of them, timer one, timer two. Timer one controls your heat system. Timer two controls the oil skimmer. To set these, you just simply pull out the uh, black marks during the hours in which you wish them to be uh, inoperable and set the time accordingly. Very simple operation. To walk you through the control panel, there's an electrical disconnect right up top um, that actually disconnects power just like a breaker box would. Your overload indicator is right here. In the event that this dot is unlit, basically that represents that uh, one of these breakers has been tripped or triggered. Uh, to check them, the red dot indicates when it's out that it is operable. Um, to pull, you just pull them out in the event that uh, that uh, they have been triggered. You'll notice an e-stop and on the label it does read in very small print uh, to pull out to reset. To stop you just simply push in and that disconnects the entire system uh, so it will no longer operate, shuts down complete operation. There are three of these e-stops on the system. One is located here on the control panel the other is located at the end of the control panel near the entrance conveyor. The third is located at the exit location during, near the unload. Now notice that the button is up in the center. That's in the event that if someone was to get caught in one of the conveyors somehow, this button would be within reach. To reset the system, make sure that all the e-stops are pulled out and ready to go. Um, to begin, the first button you want to turn on is the blower. And if that doesn't turn on, always make sure the reset button has been pushed. The reset will be indicated by a green light. But to turn on the blower, just simply turn it on and that will exit the steam through the top of the system. The next system is the wash pump, we'll turn it on. The rinse pump, we'll turn it on. Oscillation, we will turn the oscillator on. Autofill should be set to on pretty much most of the time. Heat can be set to auto or by hand. If it's in the auto position, that basically allows the, uh, the thermostats to totally control the system by hand. The thermostat still controls it, but you can actually turn the power on and off when needed. Speed conveyor, this actually sets the speed of the conveyor system. To turn the conveyor on, simply turn the switch this direction and your conveyor will begin to operate. The speed switch will indicate how fast that conveyor operates. At full speed, this unit will process a piece in approximately right at under two minutes. At 50%, um, at 
Thirty percent of the time is approximately five minutes and fifty-five seconds to process a piece. The heater is located down below the conveyor system. Next to the heater you'll notice there's a burn-off box. The burn-off box is where you can place sludge to have it burned off. The skimmer will, uh, when the timer is set that we covered a moment ago, can be set so that it will run early AM prior to operation of the machine. We'll remove the uh, oil skim off the top of the tanks. The pump that you see there is the, uh, the wash pump. We have the two filter canisters that are also stainless steel. Keep in mind this machine is all stainless steel with the exception of the shrouds or the skin along the bottom of the outside tanks. Internally all stainless steel. There are filter covers located on the wash and the rinse. The handles for those are right here. They just simply pull up and out. Same with this side over here. There's two of them. One on this side and one on this side. The divide's right here in the center. The rinse tank is totally separate. It has its own plate to remove. Now when you operate these systems, you will be operating them with the plate covers in place over the top of those skimmers so they will not be visible. Uh, those are in the picture now. The pressure gauges are located on each one of the filter canisters. There's an in, incoming pressure and an exit pressure. And I do believe um, you can tell that by labels in line and exit I believe we'll have a label in a moment. These items right here are your floats that basically set your uh, auto fill and low water off. They're set by a, a set screw here that allows you to lower or raise the floats to determine when the system turns on and off or when it adds water or in the case of the low water shutoff will shut the system off in the event that uh, a low water situation occurs. Your inlet is right here. This is where you're, you'll have to have your plumber or whoever come in and connect your uh, fresh water source to your system. There's drains both at the bottom of the rinse tank and back over here on the wash tank. One note on the skimmer, you can set a uh, five gallon bucket or whatever size bucket uh, directly underneath to catch that. It can also be equipped with clips so that a five gallon bucket can hang from the skimmer plate itself. Conveyor motors are located underneath the yellow panels. Uh, there are safety guards on those to prevent access to access them. There's bolts on top and on the front. I'm going to go ahead and set the system down in basically the same order or opposite order of what I just turned it on. You access the system with the handles. And this is uh, where the washing occurs. The primary manifold is the oscillating manifold. That's this manifold that travels here, all the way under the conveyor, back around, up, and then also across the top. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of dark in there. The second set of manifolds is back, back here that goes around. And it looks like my lens is steaming up. And there's another, another set that comes around on this side. At the beginning of the system, where you see the black and can't see anymore, those are actually curtains, just like you saw on the outside of the system. Uh, those are baffled inside the vestibule section. Right here, you'll notice another set of curtains and another set of curtains. If we keep going, a third set of curtains. That prevents steam from escaping from the system and helps to prevent uh, cross-contamination. You have those same baffles in the center of the system right here. And another set. 
at this end of the system as well. This is the wrench section. Also has uh, manifolds traveling, manifolds traveling here and under and back around, as well as over here, down and around under the conveyor and over. You'll notice that the uh, the jets themselves, the uh, items that you see there yellow, are open tips and actually have water flowing through them. The gray tipped um, jet nozzles are blocked. They are not being in use at this moment. This system does give you the ability to adjust these by simply switching them out. They clip on and off relatively easy so that they come off like so and they go back on. Keep in mind I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time. Just as easy. can be clipped in place. So switching out nozzles is not a difficult task by any means. Basically you've got your clip, your ring, and the nozzle itself make up the nozzle. Just to give you an idea, simple to close. I'm going to attempt to operate the oscillating mode now. First I have to trip the reset switch. This may be difficult to do. And I have to hold the, the disconnect up here in order to operate this. So just one moment, I'll flip the oscillator on. And you'll notice that it's actually moving. And the, uh, the oscillation, oscillating is actually occurring. Now of course I do not have the jets on. If I did, we'd, we'd all be wet right now. When I let go of the disconnect, of course, it sets it down. Keep in mind to restart the system. After the door is closed, it sets the reset switch up, up, up top or the disconnect. Make sure the doors are latched. And then if you come back to the control panel and attempt to turn things on, it's dead. Notice that the reset light is not on. It needs to be on in order to operate. Once that's on, the machine's back in operation. Uh, one note, when you have your electrician wire the system, make sure that the uh, the motors are turning the proper direction. If they uh, wire with the wrong polarity, uh, your system will not uh, perform at its peak capability. In fact, it will not perform well at all. Um, there is an arrow indicator on the outside of the motor for the direction of the oscillating plate to move. Just take a look at that and that will confirm that you have indeed got your system wired correctly. This has been a brief tour of the LS flow-through wash system. I thank you for your time and have a great day.